Chapter 5. Almost there, Maria bounced up and down on the seat of her dad's blue car, rumbled down the long, bumpy dirt driveway. I can't believe you finally made it to the stable. Me neither, Lizzie said, hoping that the nervousness in her voice sounded like excitement. Her first riding lesson was finally about to happen. Her mom had insisted that Lizzie deserved a break from Rascal, so she couldn't use that excuse anymore. Within a half an hour, she was going to be on the back of some gigantic horse. If she was lucky, if she wasn't lucky, she'd be lying in the dust after being bucked off. Lizzie shivered, just thinking about it made her heart beat harder. You're going to love it here, I promise, Maria babbled on. Everybody's so friendly and the horses are the best, and Kathy is so, so cool. She knows everything there is to know about riding and caring for horses. Remember how I told you about that one horse, Tony, who got hurt his leg? Kathy and Wayne have been taking care of him. He's almost ready to ride again. Great, Lizzie said. Maria barely seemed to notice whether she said anything or not. Her friend was so excited that she kept just kept on talking. Lizzie wasn't even sure which of the names Maria mentioned belonged to the horses and which were people. Sally, Frankie, Tony, Kathy, Vanessa, Pokey, Sir Galahad, the names all just blended into one another. Hey girl, slow down, Maria's father said, patting her daughter on the shoulder. Give Lizzie a chance to get to know the place on her own way. But Maria was just kept bouncing in her seat. Here we are, she sang out as the car pulled into a stop in front of a weathered old barn. Next to it was a riding ring, a dusty circle of dirt enclosed by a wooden fence. And next to that was the paddock, the grassy area where the horses grazed. Look, there's Tony, she pointed to a white horse with big black spots. He was yanking grass out of the ground in the paddock, whisking his long black tail as he chewed. He's a paint. You know, like an Indian pony, Tony, she called. She made a clucking noise with her tongue as she and Lizzie climbed out of the car, and Tony came trotting over. Marie's dad waved and drove off. Lizzie watched him go, wishing she was still in the car. Maria handed Lizzie a big carrot. Here, give him this, and he'll love you forever, she said. Lizzie stood frozen in place. Go ahead, Maria said. He won't hurt you. Lizzie laughed nervously. I know that, he said. Uh, here you I'll go first. Tony's teeth looked awful big when he took Maria's carrot. Tony reached his nose through the fence and bumped it against Lizzie's arms. Hey, she said. He just wants your carrot, Maria told her. Carefully, Lizzie held out the carrot the way she had seen Maria do it. On her flat, outstretched hand, Tony took it gently. Lizzie didn't feel a thing except his warm breath on her hand. She could smell his horsey smell now, and she was up close to him. She kind of liked this. His coat was shiny, his nose looked as soft as velvet. You can pet him, Maria urged. Slowly, Lizzie reached up a hand and patted Tony's neck. His ears twitched, and he blew out some air as he leaned towards her. She pulled away, but she wasn't really scared. Maybe some horses were mean, but Tony was obviously harmless and sweet. He likes you, Maria said. Has Tony ever met anyone he didn't like, especially if they give him carrots? A woman in jeans and a blue work shirt had come up next to then she was smiling. You must be Lizzie, she said, sticking out her hand. I'm Kathy. Glad to see you here. She can ride today, right? Maria said. Kathy paused for a second and looked at Lizzie over. Sure, she said. I think she'd enjoy riding Sally, don't you? Perfect, agreed Maria. I'll go tack her up. Lizzie pictured a big horse tacked to a bulletin board. What? she asked. I know, put her saddle and bridle on, Maria explained. That stuff's called tack. She pulled Lizzie by the hand. Come on, I'll show you how to do it. Next time you can get your own horse tacked up. Lizzie followed Maria into the dark, shady barn. It smelled musty and sweet, like hay and horses and leather. Lizzie took a deep breath, and she walked down the aisle with Maria. Horses leaned up over their stall over the knicker to knicker. Hello, and Maria told Lizzie's name, pointing to the hand-carved signs nailed up above each stall. That's Willie and Jasper and Treasure, she said. The black one is Jet. She's a little skittish. I like this one, Lizzie said, looking at a golden horse with a pale gold mane. That's Minx. She's a Palomino. Isn't she gorgeous? Sally turned out to be a sweet gray horse. Not too big and very friendly. Maria took Lizzie into the tack room, grabbed a saddle and bridle, and back to the stables to walk Sally out of her stall. The mare waited patiently while Maria gave Lizzie a lesson in putting on a saddle, showing her how to check if the girth was tight enough. Then Sally let Lizzie walk her towards the riding ring. Kathy met them at the barn door. Up you go, she said, pointing to a large step. 
you can stand on that block to make it easier. Lizzie hesitated. Go ahead, said Kathy. Just put your left foot into the stirrup and throw your right one over her back. She'll stand there all day until you're ready, but the sooner you get up, the sooner you can be riding. Before she knew it, Lizzie was sitting high on up on Sally, riding her around the ring at an easy, slow walk, while Kathy guided the horse with the long rope called the lead line. Kathy said encouraging things like, Great, keep your heels down and your head up. Elbows out. Excellent. You look great on her, Maria said. She was grinning from ear to ear. So was Lizzie. Riding had definitely taken her mind off Rascal. To her surprise, she was having the best time ever. Chapter 6 Rascal, no, Lizzie could not believe how many times she had said those words in the last ten minutes. She and Rascal and Charles were at puppy kindergarten again. They were trying their best to follow Jamie's directions. Well, Lizzie and Charles were trying to follow directions. Rascal, he was just trying to cause as much trouble as possible, or at least that's the way it seemed. How could you be so smart, so cute, but also such a pest, Lizzie asked the puppy. They were supposed to be practicing walking on a leash. All the owners and puppies were going in a big circle around the gym. Rascal had already barked at the bulldog puppy, chased the dash hound, and pounced on the lab puppy and both poodles, and not during playtime either. She had done all that during the lesson, on sitting. Now they were trying to walk, but kept grabbing the leash with his teeth and shaking it, growling like a little puppy growls. Grr, grr. Rascal was teaching that Lisa lesson. Silly thing. Would these people ever understand that he needs to run, run, run? He did stop for a second when Lizzie said no. He gazed up at her with the head cocked to one side. He looked like he was asking, who, me? His black eyes were shining. His right ear stood straight up. His left ear flopped over. His whiskers were twitching. Rascal looked as if he could really understand what she was saying, even if he couldn't answer. Lizzie felt her heart melt. This sweet, smart, wild puppy really deserved to find a wonderful, loving home. But if he couldn't learn to behave, who would ever take him? Okay, good job, everybody, Jamie was saying. Lizzie and Charles exchanged a look. They knew she didn't mean Rascal when she said everybody. The other puppies weren't perfect either. For example, Bullwinkle the Bulldog absolutely hated to walk on a leash. His owner would tug on the leash, but Bullwinkle would not budge, not even an inch. The Bulldog's wrinkly flat face made him look so stubborn that Lizzie had to laugh. Trixie the Corgi had a habit of sneaking up on the other puppies and stealing their toys, no matter how many of her own toys her owner brought along. Floppy ones, squeaky ones, balls, tug toys. Trixie always liked the other puppy's toys better. But Rascal was the worst by far. It was as if he always had to be the center of attention. Couldn't stand it when Jamie talked for too long or when one of the other puppies was being praised. He would bark and jump and scurry around. Lizzie had to pick him up so he, wouldn't cal so he would calm down. How's he doing at home, Jamie asked. She had to come up to Lizzie and Charles during a short break. She reached down to scratch Rascal under the chin, which made him wag his tail as hard as he could. Lizzie sighed. Well, he's not chewing on as many things, she said, but that's only because he's kind of locked up in the kitchen most of the time. He's learning to come when we call his name, Charles reported. Remember, Lizzie? He did it yesterday, five times in a row. That's true, Lizzie agreed. He really is very smart. He's just so much energy. Jamie nodded thoughtfully. He may just need lots and lots of exercise and room to run, she said. She looked around the gym and saw that the other owners were back from the break. All right, she said, walking back to the middle of the circle. Let's ask our dogs to stay. Lizzie groaned, not loudly enough for Jamie to hear, just a little tiny groan. So far, Rascal was not doing too well with the stay thing. Remember, we went to help the dogs do well. So we're going to start by asking them to stay for only about two seconds, Jamie said. If they manage that, we'll give them a treat and lots of praise. The next time we'll ask for three seconds. She had the owners face their puppies, holding the leash. A few of the puppies looked up at the owners, waiting to see what they wanted. But Rascal, like most of the puppies, looked off in another direction, distracted by every noise and smell. This place was great. Rascal loved being around all the other dogs. But what was the point if he couldn't play with them? What could he possibly be more important than playing? Okay, now, ask your dog to sit, said Jamie. Sit, chorused all the owners. Four dogs sat. 
but the lab puppy fell down and rolled over. Rascal started barking and jumping up and down. The German shepherd puppy backed up and stood there, twitching his big ears and staring at Rascal. The dash and sniffed the floor. Charles, whose turn it was to hold Rascal's leash, looked helplessly at Lizzie. Jamie ignored Rascal. Great, she said. Now put your hand out and raise the palm so it's facing the other dogs. Now tell your dog to stay. Stay, everyone said. Charles said it too. Lizzie doubted whether Rascal could hear the command. <clears throat> the puppy was too busy barking. And one and two and okay, said Jamie. He, all the dog owners and then it released the word okay. The dogs jumped up, tails wagging. Rascal just kept bouncing and barking. I think that's about all the time we have tonight, Jamie said, checking the clock on the wall. See you all next time. Lizzie and Charles were heading outside when Jamie stopped them at the door. I really hate to say this, she said, with a very serious look on her face. But I don't think Rascal is, well, I don't think he's fitting in here. I thought we could help him, but he's making it hard for the other dogs to learn. I'm afraid I have to ask you not to bring him back to class anymore. Lizzie looked down at her sneakers. She'd known this was going to happen. Rascal was getting kicked out of puppy kindergarten. If you'd like, you can bring him in for some private lessons, Jamie went on in a gentle voice. But to tell you the truth, he needs a ton of training to be the right dog for a regular house and family. He may need a different kind of home. Lizzie looked at her and then down at Rascal. What was Jamie saying? Did she mean that Rascal could never learn to behave? But then how could the Petersons ever find him a good home? What kind of foster family were they if they couldn't help Rascal? Rascal wondered why the people were being so serious. They had been having such a good time, jumping and barking and playing. Why was the girl looking at him that way?